So every one of our ancestors was a Stone Age person. It doesn't matter who we are today, what color our skin is, where we live, what we eat, or what we do. Every single one of our ancestors was a Stone Age person. And in some cultures, that might have only been 200 years ago. And in other cultures today, that might have been a thousand years ago. But it doesn't matter. We all come from that same root. This has pretty much become my life. Um, started on this path, so to speak, uh, five years ago. Um, before that, I was in academia. I actually got a PhD in cognitive psychology, and um, I was teaching for a year, and kind of decided to get out of that and live a more sustainable lifestyle. And so I thought that primitive living skills was a way to start from scratch, from the basics in a way, and then can I build up from there if need be, you know, can I meet my needs? We're um, taking, putting up the dams to create electricity, or we're drilling natural gas to create electricity, or we're mass producing foods to feed ourselves as a species, but whoever we are and wherever we are, and whatever we do, it's still the earth who is providing for us. Whether we're just picking berries off this bush here, or if we're going down to the supermarket and buying something that's been transported from New Zealand and um, highly packaged and processed. If you take it back to its root, it's still coming from the earth. What separates us from the rest of the animals on this planet is our ability to make things and change our environment. We used to always question, who am I? Where is my place in the world? What are human beings' place in the world? I've been always attracted to primitive skills and learning how our ancestors used to live. It feels a lot more natural. When I craft using natural materials, it just, it really grounds me. And it really makes me see the role I play in the whole world. The majority of people do not know how to make fun. The majority of people don't know how to pick up a rock and make a basic tool so they can in turn make a more complex tool and yet another more complex tool eventually leading all the way up to steel. And when you use something from your environment and you use your hands to make it and you see the impact that it creates, then you start to care. And if you care about your environment, then you will protect it. And that's what it's all about. like the emphasis in a lot of what are called survival schools these days is on surviving if you're in a wilderness situation until you can get back to civilization and after several many years of working in those kinds of schools I felt that really what we are is creatures on this earth and we should be living with the earth and and um, that wilderness is not something to get away from, but it's something to be able to live in harmony in. Like, it's not really possible to just go out into the wilderness with nothing. I mean, on a, in a short-term basis it would be possible, but if you really want to do primitive living in the long term, you're going to need a certain amount of comfort and material culture and all your tools and all that stuff. And so this program was really good at preparing us for that. And uh, we've done some really intensive crafting mm -hmm. <laughs> for the past few months. And uh, you know, learning about animal processing and preserving meat in different forms. And just seeing what it really takes to, to live that way, in a primitive way. And I really enjoyed it, really enjoyed seeing the whole process. You know, from mm -hmm. gathering the raw materials like deer skins, to making something, to actually using it in a context where in a, in a context appropriate way. Mm -hmm. I always played in the woods. I, I would live not in town, so I was always like playing by myself in the woods or with my brother, or whatever. And, and um, you know, I was making bow drill fires and that sort of thing at a fairly young age. I went to college and I lived in a bunch of crappy apartments and then um, as a way to get out of that, 
I, uh, I built a yurt with a friend. It was all like recycled, just sticks we picked up and we felted that. And, and that sort of got me rolling in the, the handcrafting type, type of thing. And, um, and then I moved to Twisp and I met Lynx and it's kind of been full on since then. I've been practicing and teaching uh, primitive survival skills for about 20 years now, but I've never done anything quite on this scale before. On uh, most of my survival trips, we go out with, uh, with some basic gear, and, you know, uh, regular clothes, tennis shoes, uh, blue jeans, flannel shirts, pocket knife, uh, things like that, and then we'll do uh, survival skills from there. So uh, I've never done anything quite like this before, to, to go out to spend a month living in the wilderness uh, using all Stone Age gear. And, uh, you know, frankly, I've kind of plateaued in my skills, and, and I feel like I need to uh, push myself a bit, need to, uh, to learn some new things. And so uh, I'm really excited about, uh, about the time ahead. I'm a young woman, and I'm looking, searching for my path and looking for what, what it is that drives me and what makes me happy. And a lot of the aspects of what drives me and what makes me happy are incorporated in a project like this. Um, we always gather our people many months in advance of our projects. And the reason I do this is we're not trying to just go out into the wilderness and survive for a short period of time with whatever we have right there. I base my model on traditional cultures. And traditional cultures, in times of abundance, will be harvesting. And we start harvesting the wild foods that are in season and available at that time, just as indigenous peoples would have done. And we put, we eat some at that time and we preserve some and we learn how to cook with them and so on and um, put them away for the project so that when we do go out, we don't have to take any food that we bought from the store with us. So when the Saskatoons are ripe, you harvest Saskatoons. When the bulbs and the root crops are available, you harvest them. When the seeds are ripe, you harvest the seeds. We also spend a lot of time in tanning and preparing deer and other animal skins for our clothes and containers. Ever since I learned how to tan hides and make clothes, it's really kind of become a, a passion for me. And I do it, I, I really do wear buckskins most days, ever since. It's been about, about two years now since I've been doing it. You know, I, I might not be good at everything, but I can, I can tan a hide, you know, and I can, I can make something out of it. So it's, it really has, it's given me, it's given me power in myself, I think. We also teach our students how to not only make shelters, but how to stay warm using friction fire method of fire building. We purchased and harvest a buffalo so that we will have meat while we're out on our project. And even though we don't kill our buffalo with primitive methods, we um, usually end up cutting it up and um, butchering it using stone and bone tools. What we are trying to do is use the things that we have around us or from our region where we come from. So if you came from Minnesota and you wanted to bring wild rice as one of your food resources, yes, you can do that came from California, you can bring acorns, even though we don't have either one of those things here in this environment. It's a little bit hard to know where to draw the line, but uh, basically we draw the line that if you have made it yourself from natural resources, um, then it's pretty much okay. <laughs>